Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about shower heads, and we'd like to thank ReviewLab.com for listing us as a good podcast for home repair tips and products, and they're a nice resource for product reviews. It's ReviewLab.com. Showers didn't become popular in the U.S. until the 1930s and 1940s, and some newspaper articles at the time thought that the powerful stream of water coming out of a shower head could be too stressful for women and children. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a 1914 ad in the New York Times for a four-shower head, full-body shower system, and it says it beats plain bathtubs in 40 ways. But it only listed seven reasons. <laughs> so number one, it fits any bathtub. Number two, it attaches in three to four minutes. Number three, it's all metal, strong, and handsome. <laughs> number four, there's no sloppy, clammy, unsanitary curtains needed. What do you mean? Yeah, weird. It must have just pointed straight down. Number five, it doesn't get your hair wet. <laughs> number six, a daily shower that women can enjoy because you don't need a mussy rubber cap. <laughs> <laughs> And number seven, you can use it without a tub faucet. It's I nice. don't understand any of these things. <laughs> Take a shower, but don't get your hair wet. <laughs> Before 1980, the average shower head used 3.5 to 5.5 gallons per minute. Wow. In the 1980s, some states regulated it to 3.5 gallons per minute, and then other states at 3 gallons a minute. And in 1992, the EPA went to 2.5 gallons per minute for all states. Mm. Then in 2010, New York City went to 2 gallons per minute. 2016, California and Colorado went to 2 gallons per minute. And in 2018, California is now at 1.8 gallons per minute. Mm. And going to less gallons per minute is saving billions of gallons of fresh water a year. Mm. Good. So now, depending on where you live, the amount of water that the shower head can use is regulated. So you have to decide what type of spray you want out of your shower head. Do you want strong pressure or a softer soaking spray? And if you're looking for more pressure, I would look for 2.5 gallons or whatever the max is in your area with a smaller diameter head, so one to three inches. And then compare the amount of nozzles in those models. The fewer nozzles you have, the more pressure you're gonna feel. If you're looking for better coverage, then you would go to more nozzles or rings, and that's going to make... What do you mean, nozzles? So the amount of openings on the shower face or the head. So they usually call it nozzles on a shower head. Huh. And making and having more or having more rings of these nozzles, it makes it easier to wash soap out of your hair. Hmm. Shower heads that are in the 3 to 6 inch diameter with multiple settings are going to give you more spray options, like a focused high pressure, pulsating, or massage and then the wider settings for your head and your body. Hmm. The large shower heads, 6 to 14 inches wide, can have multiple settings for a variety of spray patterns or just one setting for a rain effect. Mm -hmm. So those larger diameter shower heads with more nozzles are going to have the least amount of pressure, but they're going to cover a wider area. Okay. Shower heads that are labeled water scents are using 2 gallons per minute or less, and they have to meet a specific spray force and coverage. Mm. So they're analyzing the spray pattern at a specific distance so you don't have any hollow spots. What do you mean and hollow? So like some shower heads, they'll have maybe an outside ring of nozzles, and so you get this kind of round spray, but the center of it, there's no water in the center of that spray. Huh. So the water sense label is going to be a nice blend between good pressure and coverage, and then you're using very little water. Hmm. There's a fitting called the Felton OxyJet. It's O-X-I-J-E-T, and this was developed with Australia's Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization. Hmm, that sounds official. And this is going to reduce water flow down to 2.2 gallons per minute. It's actually sucking air into it. It fills the water drops that are coming out of the shower head with air bubbles. Hmm. So it causes the water to feel like it has much more pressure when it hits your skin because you're popping all the bubbles that it created. Thanks. Uh, uh, weird, huh? Mm -hmm. You can also get shower heads that draw air in, and they're called air injection or aerating, and some of the top rated come from Kohler. Their style is Catalyst. It's K-A-T-A-L-Y-S-T. There's a company called Hans Grohe. It's H-A-N-S-G-R-O-H-E. 
and Dan's, D-A-N-Z-E. And Dan's has different versions. So you can get one that's 2.5 gallons per minute, two 1.75 or 1.5 gallons per minute. Huh. And just by injecting air, it actually feels like you're getting more water pressure than it is. Hmm. Nice. There are atomizing or misting shower heads, and these are designed to break the water drops into smaller drops. Some of them will increase the speed of the water so it feels like it's higher pressure, but the misting styles aren't going to have that high pressure feel. Hmm. Some of the complaints I saw with the air injection or atomizing is it can cool off the water as it's leaving the shower head. Where a standard stream spray, it's not going to lose heat as easy. Hmm. There's also wave pattern shower heads. So the Delta H2O kinetic shower head, this creates a wave as the water comes out of the shower head, so it's going to cover more area and it's going to feel warmer. <laughs> when you're comparing shower heads, most of the shower heads are rated or they base their GPMs on an 80 PSI, but most homes have a water pressure of 40 to 60 PSI. And if you have a home in a community with a high pressure around 80 PSI or more, the plumbing codes require a water pressure regulator and the most common setting on that is going to be 50 PSI. So how do you which... know what your PSI is? <laughs> so you can get a pressure gauge at the hardware store and you're going to screw that on to the outside spigot, so your hose bib outside, mm -hmm. turn it up all the way and now you know your water pressure. Will this vary from like house to house in the neighborhood? Yes, so it can vary from house to house the closer you are. If you're in a community where you have a water tower, mm -hmm. if you're closer to the water tower, it's going to be higher. Huh. If you're farther away, it's going to be lower. If you're at the bottom of some hills, right. it's going to be higher. <laughs> so it's going to vary. So when you're looking at the label, you want to see how they compare it. So one style I looked at, it had a 1.8 gallon per minute if you have 30 PSI in your house. At 50 PSI, it has 2 gallons per minute. 60 PSI, 2.2 gallons per minute, and then at 80 PSI, you got your 2.5 gallons per minute. Wow. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Is there anything you could do if you have low water pressure so besides you, move? If, <laughs> so if you have your own well, you can adjust the pressure switch going into your water tank, and that's going to give you more pressure, or you might have to change that pressure switch. If you have city water, you can get a pressure booster hmm. and a pressure tank, and that's going to increase the pressure. So if your water pressure is 30 PSI or maybe under 40, it might be worth doing that. Okay. When you're shopping for shower heads, you can have a fixed style where the shower head is mounted to a shower arm, which is the most common, but it could be mounted to the ceiling or a wall in custom showers. The fixed shower heads can have just a single spray setting or multiple settings. And many of the manufacturers call that wide fixed shower head a rain head. Mm. And they can either be round, oval, or square. You can get handheld shower heads, and these are attached to a hose, and these are really good for older people or someone who has to shower in a seat, and you can use this for kids or pets. They're actually really handy for cleaning off screens or vents or other cleaning projects. Mm -hmm. And a 60-inch hose is the most common, but I would compare the lengths when I'm shopping. To be ADA compliant, it needs to be 84 inches long. Mm -hmm. And then I would look to see how it's attached. Either it's going to be mounted to a clip or a bracket. See how adjustable that is. And some of the handheld shower heads can have a sliding bar to adjust the height. And that's nice if you have a lot of different people in the house using the shower. Some actually have magnetic panels, yeah. so they're very easy to put in place. You know, they're nice too is when you're cleaning the shower. The right, yeah. So. Yeah, smart. And some of the handheld styles are a multi-head or a two-in-one style shower head. So a regular handheld shower head fits into a bracket right. on the shower arm, or this style will fit into a larger fixed shower head. Right. And what's weird is years ago, the multi-head models, you could have a lot of exceptions for the water restrictions. Or if you had a full body system, mm -hmm. previously, let's say you had a four-head system. All four heads have a max of 2.5 gallons per minute. Okay. So you could actually be using 10 gallons per minute. Wow, that's crazy. Now it's changed, so the total output can only be 2.5 gallons per minute, depending on the state you're in. Mm -hmm. So many of these new systems, you can't turn on all of the heads at once. So what's the point? Well, I mean, you can have different heads or different nozzles in different parts of a panel. So if you want to hit your body only, like that old-fashioned one where you don't get your hair wet. <laughs> or you can turn on, you know, two heads at a time. You have 1.25 gallons per minute. Or if you just turn on one of them, then you've got 2.5 or whatever the max is yeah. for your state. Interesting. 
There are specialty shower heads with LED lights. Some change color as you shower, or they can have one color. There's one by Dream Spa that has LED lights that change color depending on the water temperature. <laughs> you can get Bluetooth speaker shower heads. Kohler's Moxie, it's M-O-X-I-E. They have a magnetic speaker that docks to the center of the shower head, and so you can shower with music on. And then you can pull that out and bring it around the house with you. <laughs> it has a little speaker stand. And this works within 32 feet of whatever the source is. So if you're pulling music from your smartphone, for example. Right. The Evolve Shower Start System lets the water flow until it reaches 95 degrees, and then it shuts down to a trickle. Hmm. So you've warmed up your water, and now it shuts it down. When you're ready to jump in the shower, you just flip the lever, and now you have full flow at a warm temperature, <laughs> so you don't have to jump into a cold shower. <laughs> and then a lot of people, I think they let the shower run right. for a while, you know, and, and so you're wasting water. Right, right. This, once it gets up to temperature, it shuts down, hmm. so, it's, so it's pretty cool. The Delta Temp 20 has a sensor that glows different colors when the temperature of the water changes. So this, you can know when the water's warm enough so you can jump in. Mm. There's showerhead filters that remove chlorine and other chemicals from your water. Some manufacturers have a variety of different filters for different chemicals or minerals, uh -huh. especially if you live in an area with hard water. And some people are concerned about the chlorine absorption. The University of Pittsburgh estimates about 60% of the chlorine that people absorb comes from daily showering through their skin and inhaling water vapor. Huh. So some of the top rated shower filters are from Culligan, Aquasana, Sprite, Pelican, and Barclay. And most of the manufacturers recommend changing the filter once every six months. Hmm. If you're in an area with hard water and have high concentrations of calcium and magnesium, this is going to prevent soap from giving you a good lather. And hard water leaves a soap film and scale deposits on your hair and your skin. Yeah. So if you're using a shower filter, it can help soften the water so your soap is going to work better. And you're actually going to have less deposits of soap scum and scale in your shower. Interesting. I read a report from a dermatologist and he talked about showering every day and how it's tough on your body if you're using the wrong soaps. Hmm. So he said using standard soap, it can strip the natural oils from your skin, which can cause skin damage, make you more susceptible to bacteria and viruses, dry, flaky skin, or eczema. Hmm. A University of Iowa study said don't use water that's too hot, and from their research in their Department of Dermatology, they suggest using Dove, Neutrogena dry skin formula, Aveeno cleansing bars for dry skin, or Oil of Olay sensitive skin soap. Hmm. The Mayo Clinic suggests using lukewarm water to shower, use a gentle soap and a moisturizer after you shower. They're saying that dry skin can develop into either bacterial infections or an inflammation of hair follicles. Hmm. <laughs> the EPA says the average shower in the U.S. lasts about 8 minutes and at 2.2 gallons per minute you're going to use about 18 gallons of fresh water. Wow. And in the U.S. we're using more than a trillion gallons of water for showering a year. So one of their recommendations is to take a Navy shower. And so what's that? The Navy developed this to conserve fresh water on Navy ships. So you're going to turn on the water for about 30 seconds to get your body and your hair wet. Then you're going to turn off the water, shampoo your hair, soap up and scrub your body. Then you're going to turn the water back on. Rinse your hair and your body and try to keep that at about a minute or so. Okay. The EPA says that if you can keep your shower time about two minutes with a Navy shower, right. you're only going to use about three gallons of water versus wow. an eight-minute shower using 18 to 20 gallons of water. <laughs> and then the EPA said if you could just reduce it to a five-minute shower okay. versus eight, you're going to save about 12 gallons of water for every shower, about 4,500 extra gallons a year you'll be saving. Wow. To replace the shower head is a pretty easy project. You're going to need a smooth jaw adjustable wrench or pliers. And if you have a tool with serrated teeth on the jaws, mm -hmm. you're going to want to cover those with electrical tape or wrap the nut on the shower head with a cloth. That way you're not going to mar the finish. Okay. That pipe that's coming out of the wall, it's called the shower arm. Mm -hmm. So you're going to unscrew the shower head where it meets the shower arm in a counterclockwise direction. And once you remove the old shower head, you're going to clean off the male threads on the shower arm. If How? there's any, if there's, well, if there's pipe thread compound, you're just going to use an old cloth and wipe off the old compound. If there's Teflon tape on it, 
I would pull out my pocket knife <laughs> and get rid of the Teflon tape or some small, like a small slotted screwdriver, get that off there. Mm -hmm. With your new shower head, it's either going to have a washer inside or it won't. If it has a washer, then you're not going to need pipe thread compound or Teflon tape. You'll just screw it down right on that washer okay. and it's not going to leak. But if it doesn't have a washer, you need pipe thread compound or Teflon tape to prevent it from leaking at the nut. Mm -hmm. So if you're using pipe thread compound, which is like a paste that you put on the male thread of the shower arm, I would use the style that has Teflon in it. That way you can use it with any material, including plastic. Mm -hmm. But I would check the manual to see what they recommend. Okay. If you're using Teflon tape, you want to wrap it in a clockwise direction on the shower arm. I just use some Odie Teflon tape. And in fact, the Teflon tapes don't say Teflon anymore. Mm -hmm. It's either going to say PTFE tape or it's going to say plumber's tape. Okay. And they wanted you to wrap it three to five times in a clockwise direction. But I would check the recommendation on whatever company you're using. Couldn't they just say four? Yeah. <laughs> And then, if you're picking a color, a lot of the pros are now recommending using gray Teflon tape because it blends with any type of material yeah. and it doesn't stand out like the old white Teflon tape. Okay. When you're tightening down the shower head, I would use a cloth around the nut and that way you're going to protect the finish. Snug it down and then test it for leaks. If you have a little drip, just give it a quarter turn. Most of the shower arms, they're coming out of the wall either at 72 to 80 inches from the shower floor or the tub floor. And if your shower head is either too low or you want it at a different distance from the wall, you can change the shower arm. Okay. So the shower arm's a half inch IPS, so iron pipe size. And the basic shower arm comes out of the wall at a 45 degree angle, six inches, eight inches is pretty common. You can get different lengths that come straight out of the wall and then have a very tight 90 degree turn. So these come 10, 12, 18 inches long or longer, so you can get this further away from the wall, or you can get an S shape or an offset. So this is going to come straight out of the wall, then it's going to go up into like a gooseneck, mm -hmm. and then you can put your shower head on that, or you can get adjustable swing style arms, and this can be attached to the basic shower arm that's coming out of the wall, mm -hmm. or you could remove that basic 45 degree angle you can get an arm that comes straight out, and then you can put this adjustable swing style onto it. And now you can extend the length or the height. It swivels to a lot of different positions, so it just makes it very convenient. A lot of these older homes, the showers are just too low. Really? And so now you can adjust this and just make it comfortable. If you have an old shower head that needs to be cleaned or it's not spraying properly, you can use a 50-50 solution of CLR and water and then just scrub it with an old toothbrush, or you can soak it but don't let it soak more than two minutes. Really? And then you want to rinse it off. You can use a 50-50 solution of white vinegar and water and let it soak in a bowl. Or if you don't want to remove it from the shower arm, you can fill a plastic bag and you can put the shower head into it and use a rubber band to hold it in place. Hmm. You can let that sit for about an hour, then scrub it with a soft brush and rinse it. Some of the manufacturers have self-cleaning shower heads, so they have a membrane that closes and it has small pins on it that go into the spray nozzles after each shower, hmm. so it cleans it itself. And then shower heads with soft rubber nozzles, they extend off the face of the shower head. These are designed to be cleaned by hand, so you just rub them with your fingers. If you have a nozzle that isn't spraying properly, mm -hmm. you just rub it and it breaks free the deposits. Yeah. Some of the top rated shower heads, Delta, Moen, American Standard, Kohler, K-O-H-L-E-R, Speakman, it's S-P-E-A-K-M-A-N, High Sierra, and Sierra is S-I-E-R-R-A, and Whedon, W-H-E-D-O-N. And what's nice about some of the major manufacturers like Delta, Moen, American Standard, and Kohler is you can match your shower arm and your shower head to the fixtures in your bathroom. Oh, nice. Do you have anything else to add? If you like a drenching type shower, look for larger shower heads, 6 to 14 inches in diameter and lots of nozzles. For a shower head with stronger water pressure, get a smaller head, 1 to 3 inches. Shower heads with the water sense label, these are going to be 2 gallons per minute or less and they're tested to have good pressure and coverage. But a medium size head, 3 to 6 inches with a wide variety of settings is probably going to be the most versatile if you have a lot of people using the shower. Hmm. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, CastBox, Player FM, or your favorite podcast app.
If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com, and you can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,